So we have seen two different methods using which we can subset a data frame. One is using the square brackets and another is using the dollar notation. Now we can use both these methods along with the which operator. Now the condition check we are going to use is I want to pick all the rows in a certain column that are greater than a specific value. So let's see RDF. Let's focus on column E1 and from this column I want values that are greater than 22. So to get that RDF $E1 is greater than 22. It will return the indices of rows that satisfy this condition. Now this I can pass as the first argument within the square brackets because it represents the rows. Now all these rows, all these rows I am going to pick from RDF and from these rows I want all the columns. So running the whole thing we will have E1 throw out only the desired values. Now we can do the same with columns as well. I will show how it can be done. So the first argument will be empty. The second argument will have the which statement and I want to pick columns, the whole columns C1 and D1. In this case I will check the names RDF present in C1 and D1. Let's see what this returns. Out of A1, B1, C1, D1 and D1, which of those is present in C1 and D1? How R will interpret it is C of 3 comma 4. And running this, we will get the columns C1 and D1. That's one more thing I would like to show you. Now, now the same thing can be done like square brackets form as well. So this will again point to the fifth column and on the fifth column we are checking which all values are greater than 22. So essentially this is equal to this form. Now let me clear the screen again. Let's see how to sort a data frame now. Now I want to sort RDF based on column E. So how would I do that? I am going to show you two ways. The first one is order. I want to find the order of RDF $E1. This will return the indices of the rows after sorting. That's one very convenient way to descending sort it. That is the opposite order. We can do this. That is adding a minus sign just before the name of the vector that you are passing to order function. We can also use the rev command. So instead of the minus sign, I will use rev and pass the order into it and that will still yield the same result. There are a couple of things I would like you to show before we close for this video. The first one is the attach statement and the second one would be matrices. The attach what it does is when we pass the data frame of interest to attach, all the columns of RDF will be available in the global namespace itself, which means now that I have attached RDF, the column names of RDF are A1, B1, C1 and so on. Now A1 will be available on main console itself. We don't, we don't need to write RDF $A1 to get A1. We can just write A1 to get it. But I advise to never do this. Suppose if you have a variable by the name, same name called A1 and after attaching this A1 from RDF's column is going to overwrite the original variable name called a1 that's going to be a namespace class definitely so better not use it then the second one is matrices the syntax to create a matrix is matrix then all the elements that you would create are going to the matrix then the number of rows or the number of columns you can specify either of those i want say 10 rows and I want to store it in M1. Now M1 will have the class of matrix and the content would look something like this. 10 rows and 10 columns. Now that's the raw way to create a matrix. We can always convert a data frame to a matrix. I'll convert RDF here and put it in M2. Now M2 has a similar format but the class of M2 will be a matrix. We can also use C bind or R bind to create a matrix. If we do C bind of A, B, C, D and E and hold it in M3. We 
it's a matrix we did a row bind earlier and that resulted in a data frame if you remember that's because the arguments we passed to the c bind or the r bind function we did earlier was actually a data frame the df was already a data frame so combining multiple data frames into rows resulted in another data frame itself so finally one final difference i would like to show you between data frames and matrices is the object size generally matrices require lower space that is they are of smaller size in memory compared to data frames let's compare two of them one is we have df that is similar to what we have created here that is the m4 or i should compare it with m3 now m3 and df are essentially the same elements the function to check the size is called object object size and i will pass m3 to this the matrix is 896 bytes and the data frames is almost double not double but about 1.6 times